The word republic, our English word republic, actually comes from a Latin phrase, the res publica, two different words. And res publica means public thing or public affair or public matter. And it was simply the phrase that Romans used to describe government. The best way to answer the question about what a republic was is to go back and think about um, the way that Polybius described it. Polybius was a Greek historian living in the second century BCE and he actually lived in Rome and so he got a chance to see Roman government and Roman culture up close and he decided to write a history about it and the fundamental question that he was trying to answer in his history was how was it that the Roman Republic came to uh, acquire an empire? That is, Rome went from being a regional power in about 200 BCE to being a world power about 53 years later. And so that was the question, you know, how was it that Rome became master of the Mediterranean world in just half a century? And the answer to the question for Polybius was because they had this great constitution, this ideal constitution, this republic. What Polybius believed is that there were three simple forms of government, monarchy, aristocracy, and democracy. Monarchy was ruled by one man, a single ruler, ruled by a king. Aristocracy was ruled by the best, the wealthiest class, the wisest class, we might say the property class to use a modern term. Democracy was ruled by the people. So you have these three simple forms of government. But Polybius also believed that each simple form of government had what we might call its evil twin. That is that monarchy was not stable by itself. It would naturally devolve into tyranny. The reason that Polybius thought that was that you could have a monarch, a king, who's perfectly good. He makes good laws. He has the respect of his subjects. But perhaps it's his son or his grandson that forgets that ideal and turns into a tyrant. Once you have tyranny, then Polybius believed it's the property class, the wealthy order, that rises up against it. And once you have that, then you have aristocracy. But aristocracy is not stable by itself either because there's this natural devolution. The aristocracy is pulled apart, it becomes factionalized, different parties rival one another, and then you have oligarchy, which it really means ruled by a few. And that turns into its own form of tyranny. What happens in, under oligarchy is that the people in particular are oppressed. And so they rise up and they form a democracy ruled by the people. But the democracy, Polybius believed, was the least stable form of government because there's no way that the people by themselves can establish the institutions that are necessary to, to constrain everyone, to keep everyone in check. So democracy naturally devolves into what's sometimes called aclocracy or mob rule or even anarchy, the absence of government entirely. And then once you have that, then there's this natural desire to try to find one man, one lawgiver, who will put everything back in order. And so that's what happens. And then you have monarchy all over again. So you have this cycle that goes through these different constitutions. So what Polybius believed was the only way to have stability was to have a constitution, a form of government that combined these three main elements, that is monarchy, aristocracy, and democracy. And if you have these three elements in perfect balance, then you have stability. What Polybius saw in the Roman constitution at the time, in the Roman Republic, was this perfect balance.